Okay, here we are, question six. So we're given this x for by spinner, and all we need to do is um, calculate the expected value of x. And to do that, we need to use the probability distribution and multiply that random variable x against each probability. So let's have a go. So for every x, let's start with the first one. So we're going to have 0 times 112 plus, so this will be the first set from, from the x equals 0, plus 3 times 2 thirds plus 6 times a quarter. And that's it. When you evaluate this, you should get 3.5. Literally, that's it, guys. Done. Okay, so that's the general idea. Okay, now we need to calculate the variance of x. Okay, so the variance of x is defined as follows. It is equal to the second moment, so the second expected moment, minus the mean squared. So let's not get confused by notation. So the second moment means that for every single random variable x, we need the x squared equivalent. So we need to find, make an additional row and call it x squared. So now let's square every value here so we can actually use this formula. So 0 squared is 0, 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9, and 6 squared is 36. Now all we do is repeat the process. So for ex squared, we're going to have um, 0 times 112 plus uh, 9 times 2 thirds plus 36 times a quarter. And then once we evaluate this, we can just subtract it against the mean squared, which is 3.5 squared. Easy. And that's it, guys. That's literally all you do. And uh, if you enter this in your calculator, you should, you should get 2.75. That's it. 2.75. And that's it for now. Okay, parts C and D. Now, what do we have here? So a bias coin has one face labeled 2 and the other face labeled 5. The score y when the coin is spun has the following distribution. So it tells us that the probability when the coin lands on 5, we get p. And the expected value of y would be 3. Okay, so c and d. Form a linear equation p and show that p gives you a third. And write down the probability distribution y. Okay, first things first. Always do the probability distribution first for any question. This is like a must. So I'm going to start with d first, yeah? Now, one thing we know is that this bias coin has, has um, one face labeled 2 and another one labeled 5. This means that the only possibilities for this probability distribution would be 2 and 5. Meaning the probability of getting this, probability of y, would be firstly, we know that probability of getting 5 would be um, p. That means the probability of getting 2 would be 1 minus p. This is, because that this, this is because the sum of these two must always equal 1. The sum of all properties must be 1. And to get this right, you have to do 1 minus p. Okay, so that's easy. Now, as for the second statement, it says that the expected value of y is 3. So if we calculate the expected value, we need to equate it to 3. So let's do it here. So the expected value of y is equal to, firstly, y times py. So 2 times 1 minus p plus 5 times p and it must equal to 3. Now, all you do is literally solve this. So let's let's try and sort it out. So expanding the bracket, you should get uh, 2 minus 2p plus 5p equals 3. 5p take away 2p is 3p. Minus uh, 2 across, you get 1, hence p equals a third. This means if we're going to update our probability distribution, what do we have? Let me change color pen. So p here, it's going to be one third and one minus p so one minus one third well it has to be two third anyway it has to be two third because the total must give you one and that's it guys that's all you need to do okay pause e f n g let's have a look so sam plays a game with the spinner and the coin each is spin one each is spun once and sam calculates his score s as follows so just to make it clear you only do do them both once, okay? So we have to combine them. We need to multiply them once each. So let's have a look at what happens. So if x equals 0, we get this result. Then s equals y squared. If x doesn't equal 0, then s equals x times y. So that seems quite easy. Now, part E. Show that the probability s equals 30. Then you get 112. Find the probability distribution s. And of course, find the expected value s. 
Now, as always, I always find it easy to do the probability distribution first, because if you can get this one right, every single thing will be easy to compute. So let's have a look. Let's start with the first condition if x equals zero. So right now I'm going to draw a property distribution, a very simple one with s and the probability of s. Okay, let's draw a nice, you know, a oh my god, that's not even a straight line. <laughs> and just try and fill it out. Okay, let's have a look. So now when x equals zero, what, is, what are the options? You get y squared. This means you have two squared or five squared. So I'll do this in blue to represent. So 2 squared is 4, 5 squared is 25. Now let's go ahead and solve the probabilities re re regarding them. So Sam plays a game and what do we know? Each is spun once. So when x equals 0, I mean you get a probability 112, then you then you pick y, whatever, whatever letter you get. So if you get y is 2, then you'll be 112 times 2 thirds. So this would be exactly 4 over 36. For 25, for the y case, when you get 112, you 112 multiply 1 third, and that will give us 1 over 36. So this is quite quite easy, this one. Be careful not to um, square these values, because remember, you're only, you're only spinning it once, not twice. Even if it says y squared, it means that your final score will be y squared, not the probability is y squared. So that's one thing to take into account. Okay. Now let's look at the second case. Let me just put the red pen. So if x doesn't equal zero, then you just simply, then the score will simply be x times y. So we have combinations. We can say three times two, which is six. We have um, three times five, which is 15. We have um, six times two, which is 12, and six times five, which is 30. Okay, now for the sixth case, so to get three and two, it would just be two thirds times two thirds, which is four ninths. To get 15, it would just be three times five, so two thirds, and one third is uh, two nines. And what else do we have? Twelve, six times two, so one quarter, and two, th and two thirds will make two twelve. So multiply them. And the last one, which is actually the solution for part E, is just one quarter times one third, which is one twelve. Okay. I think the red ones are quite straightforward, but the blue one is a bit tricky. It just depends if you didn't catch this statement out here. Spun once. Okay. So just once you use it here and of course your default is 112 because that's when x is zero we know that okay that's good so let's move forward so show that probability s is 30 well just to actually show it just say probability x equals 6 times probability y equals 5 and just fill out the numbers so this was one quarter times s uh, y equals 5 was one third and that should give us 1 over 12. now Last one, part G. So find the expected value of S. Okay. This is just like always. You just do S times the probability. So 4 times 4 of 36. So this will give us... Uh, actually, you know, let's just keep it in this format. So you literally just keep doing this. You just multiply up and down, yeah? And you keep on doing this until you get to the final one, which is 30 times uh, 1 over 12. And you should get about uh, 137 over 12. And that is the same as, yeah, about, um, I'm not sure if it's a big deal, but 11 point, let's say, 42, two decimal places. And here we go, part H. So, Charlotte also plays the game with the spinner and the coin. Each is spun once and Charlotte decides to simply ignore the score on the coin and just use x squared as a score. So that's why I got the x um, distribution right here. Sam and Charlotte each play the game a large number of times. All right, let's have a look. Now, H, state given a reason which of Sam and Charlotte should achieve the higher total score. Okay, now it gives you a big hint here. It says she uses x squared as a score. This tells us straight away that we need to find an x squared distribution. Okay. So we already know what x is, so let's just go ahead and find the x squared distribution. So we've got probability of um, getting x, so just keep the natural probability getting x. So all you do is find the x squared. So what we do now is square every term. So the square of 0 will give us 0, the square of 3 is 9, and 16 will be, uh, will be 36. Oh, my stomach. <laughs> now, how about the rest of them? Oh, well... The properties will of course be the same because it's the property of x. 
Now, all we have to do here is simply find the expected value of um, x squared. And that's fine. So expected value x squared, what is it? It'll be 0 times 12, which is nothing. 9 times uh, 2 thirds. And 36 times a quarter. Now, just working this out quickly in our, in our books. Actually, you can do this mentally. So you go 18 over 2, which would be 6. Cancels out would be 9, so it'd be 6 plus 9. So, oh, so it's actually 15. So technically, it's taking reason which of Sam and Charlotte should achieve the higher total. Well, Charlotte is clever. She's using x squared score. So Charlotte will be getting much higher than um, Sam's score. So you can say the score of Charlotte is higher. So that's the answer. It would be Charlotte. Okay. Reason 15 is greater than the expected value of S. And that's it, guys. I hope this video helped. And um, let me know what you think. And uh, I hope I didn't confuse you guys in the final part. Because actually, at this stage, my brain is all completely mush. But anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think of this video. And other than that, I shall see you in the next video. Ciao.